So let's talk about IP addresses and how IP addresses are organized. Remember, IPv4 addresses dotted decimal notation showing four parts. So I might have an address that's 128.205.32.8. So I have four numbers separated by periods. This is how these are typically displayed. This is actually a 32-bit field in the IP header. Each one of these numbers can range from 0 to 255, so they can take on 256 distinct values. Some of these addresses are special, they're only used for certain purposes, um, but you know, in general, IP addresses identify a computer on the internet, and these are IPv4 addresses. So remember, for routing purposes, it's important that these addresses are structured, that they be structured to them, because otherwise, Core internet routers would have to have an entry in their routing table for every computer that was connected to the internet. And those routing tables would be huge and the routers would be very slow. So rather than routing every entry, every IP address separately, we organize the IP addresses hierarchically. And this goes back to the very early days of the internet. So rather than saying, you know, what's the route to 128.205.32.8, the router is going to use a prefix of the IP address address to perform routing. So depending on the, uh, ad, the network that this is attached to, the route might be for just the 128 part, the route might be for 128.205, and the route could be also for 128.205.32. So the original internet structure set up three classes of networks. Networks that start with a single dotted prefix were referred to as class A networks. Networks that started with this longer uh, uh, two dotted prefix were known as class B, and networks that started with three uh, dots, three dotted uh, prefixes were known as class C. And you can see that the size of these networks varies. So if I have 128.205.32, I only have 256 values that I can stick in at the end here. So a class C network has up to 256 addresses associated with it. And it actually turns out a couple of those are special. They're used for broadcast or other reasons. And so this actually turns out to be, I think there's 254 valid host names or valid IP addresses that you can uh, register on a class C network. A class B network has more because there's more options back here. So for a class B network, I have 256 choices I can put here and I have 256 choices I can put here. And so it turns out a class B network has something like 65,000 host names that you can attach to it. A class A network is even larger than that. So a class A network, all I have is this first prefix, and then I have 256 values I can put here, 256 values I can put here, and 256 values I can put here. So um, this, let's see, it's 32 bits, so this would be 24 bits, um, 2 to the 4th is 16, um, 16 million um, 16 million different addresses that you could register on a class A network. So a class A network is huge. One of the problems that we have with IP, the, one of the reasons that we're running out of these IPv4 addresses, however, is the fact that in the original internet, there were only these three size networks. So you either had to have this small network with only 256 hosts, or you can get a medium sized network with uh, 65,000 hosts, or you can get this huge network with millions of hosts. And a lot of organizations actually got these class A networks, but they don't have enough machines to register on them. So I I think MIT originally and may still have a class A network, so they have 16 million IP addresses that they can that they can um, route to on the on the internet. That's a huge number. And if you think about it, if, if we divided up the internet into class A networks, there would only be 256 of them. And we know that there are many, many more autonomous systems that are operating out there in the world. So this was the original structure of IP addresses, and this, this structure created a lot of problems, particularly with uh, sort of usage. But this is still not a 
bad way of thinking about it. Um, one way to think about it is as you go as you go to the left in the IP address, uh, there's more information, sort of high level information about where the IP address is going. You're learning more general things like what network this IP address is actually a part of or what autonomous system this IP address belongs to. As you go to the right, you get more information that's specific to the actual host name. So this is a little bit of a reminder about how IP addresses look, how they're used in routing, and something about this, at least the structure that was set up on the early internet so they could be organized effectively and so routing tables could be set up efficiently.